I'm cold. S- like hunched in. I I was pretty comfortable in my sweater. If if the crusher didn't call me out, I'd be sweatered up again. It's cold here. It's like 48 degrees outside. It is. Kind it's of like 65 out. in here. Yeah. I don't turn the heat on. No, no, no. You just that's, wear that's a sweater. Crazy. That is crazy talk. Unless you're doing an LBDS. We got some upstairs noise. Is that going to be a factor? Uh, if it's a factor, we'll make sure we take care of it appropriately. <laughs> like take care of them or take care of the noise? We'll take care of the noise some way or another. All right. All right, Jabronis, we're back. Welcome back to the Libretti Podcast Diary Show. I'm your host, Libretti. It's the show about nothing that teaches you everything you need to know. <laughs> Here with special guest, The Creature. Steve Orman, thanks a lot for uh, again hosting. I'm I'm happy to be on the show about nothing. Yeah, um, we're actually going to be talking about uh, Hall of Fame baseball, among other things. Among other things, dumps. Um, always got to talk about dumps, <laughs> but the main the main junction is going to be uh, focusing more on the uh, the Hall of Fame stuff. And did you ever get the analytics on that episode? We got good numbers. Did we? Oh yeah. I I mean, is does it have to be like a certain requirement? Like you have to listen to a certain amount of time. It, it separates it all out. So it shows the number of views, it shows the number of likes, dislikes, um, and the percentage. Uh, then it shows um, average time people listen to it. Do you remember those numbers off the top of your head? They're not long. I, t- and they I'll tell you sh- why. They shouldn't be. So here's, here's why. Because it was an episode about dumps. No, no, no. This is why it got a lot of views, but uh-huh. not a lot of duration time. The duration was actually um, average to what my other episodes are so not long so um, <laughs> that's why it didn't matter but the views were jacked up because i use a clickbait title right, yeah, yeah. um and if people clicked on it listen you know didn't real, realize that it was about bum dumps yeah and uh you would think you know you you come for the joe rogan call out you right. stay for the bum you dumps, stay for the bum dumps but yeah. apparently that wasn't the case well there. i have proof that miley cyrus and justin bieber are the same person there's your clickbait we could add that in there. <laughs> we'll talk about that in the junction, maybe. Stay yeah. tuned, folks. So, Stay tuned. Actually, I do want to hear about your proof. <laughs> I don't have proof. That's what clickbait is. <laughs> you're, supposed to, you're supposed to release that information so early. Oh. <laughs> We're only two minutes in. It's going to kill our numbers. At least I haven't cursed yet. I don't know. That's true, yeah. Have we cursed? No. No. I don't think so. I think we're good. Now, I am really, uh, I wouldn't say concerned, but I'm interested so we already discussed this on a episode, if not the last one, that you're not supposed to curse for the first five minutes. Otherwise, it affects your viewership. Yeah, so it affects more so um, how YouTube uh, disseminates it. Like, it, 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 it shows up in their algorithm because they, like, they have the AI that does it. That's checks. what I was going to ask. Who's listening to that? It's, it's an AI script program that um, goes through the episode. But if I say, like, ship... They're pr- it's pretty good about deciphering. Right. Interesting. Um, and I've noticed it. I, I've been watching um, people like Logan Paul and, and guys who have podcasts, but it's really YouTube shows because mm-hmm. they're YouTubers. Um, and they're all, they all do the same thing. Like Logan Paul and his interviews, mm-hmm. he'll have regular interviews uh, and they'll curse throughout the whole thing. But mm-hmm. the first five minutes, they censor the curse words out. Oh. And I think it's because the algorithm picks up on early cursing yeah and it um suppresses the dissemination and how how you like when you search for something it where it pops up i wonder like if because uh i listen to a lot of podcasts too about interviews and a lot of times they have like an open where it's just like the host and maybe his co-host and they're just talking about whatever right and they're like and now here's you know will ferrell and then I, they I start think the a lot of them do it for that reason for that reason That's yeah especially ones that are doing it because like mainly for youtube right like a lot of the comedian stuff it's podcasts that they are adding for the like adding viewership on youtube mm-hmm. but they don't really care as much like theo vaughn for instance his was just a podcast for a while right and then he started putting it on youtube uh-huh. uh i think tim dylan was similar maybe so this doesn't affect your podcast side of things just if people are searching on youtube it's it's this is that's for youtube only okay yeah i don't know how it works in the in podcast land i have to imagine it's something different per podcast distributor like mm-hmm. apple and spotify and wherever else yeah so which it, i don't i don't think it matters as much yeah because from the stuff i listen to they're not censoring right, right. at least in that portion there's probably other things that they're doing mm-hmm. that up their viewership and stuff or the listenership and 
I'm not doing it. Right. Because, you know, 12 <laughs> listens Listen. across all platforms be is modest. not exactly high. That's not, that's not a modesty or a brag. Those are just the numbers. Yeah. I think that's pretty good for me, considering that... Well, you d- you're doing this for you anyways, right? Right, right. And the fact that there's 12 people at least actively listening every week. All the time. S- and, shout and out to Tony Ciccone. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, they're always giving feedback. So it's... it's uh, I'm happy with the with the group uh-huh. that, that follows you know follows sure. the program because it's they're active. Listen, you got a lot of lessons to teach and a lot of a lot of gifts to give. I'm trying, you're like a lot of gifts, to, the gift of mistakes. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody's got to make them, and I'd rather it not be me. Right, so I that's, just let that's you do. That's what it. I, I feel like. That's that's what I'm here for. It's yeah. like, do you want to make the mistake? Well, I, when I make a a, a, a bad mistake. I, I, I still in it yeah. for sometimes months on end, second guessing myself, wishing I could go back and not do that. Like, learn from that. Yeah, don't well, do that. You don't want to feel, mean, feel that yourself. I think we were talking about that too. Like, you, you have to make the mistake in order to learn. Otherwise, like, I mean, otherwise if, you're just lucky. If, if you're really smart, though, you'll learn from the guy who made who the did mistake. did it, sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's what I'm trying to, to put out there for people mm-hmm. is. I'll make the mistakes. You learn the lesson. Right. Okay. Um, to try to, and I, I mean, we all have to learn hard mistakes sometimes yeah, in the yeah. hard way. Uh-huh. But uh, if for some of this stuff, you know, if it's going to cost you money or potentially your life in the dating world, let you do it first. Let, yeah. Let me. I got I, you. I'm highly trained in, <laughs> in that skill set of. Of losing money and risking my life for love. <laughs> so, oh, gosh. Um, well, you know, that's that. That's crazy that the, yeah. the AI is that good that it can do that. It's very impressive. I, I would like to, I'd like to search to see if they, most of those platforms don't put out their, um, their algorithms mm-hmm. and scripts. There's not a lot of open source uh, material out there to read, so I'm sure YouTube doesn't doesn't have like, hey, look at our algorithm, right? So you can see what we're actually looking at. Can you even read those things? I always assumed algorithms were like in the matrix code. I, it depends on how who's writing it, like what script they're working with, mm-hmm. and some other stuff. I can't read most of it. Sure. I could tell you what it is, like, oh, that's, uh, you know, binary. I was gonna say that's <laughs> matrix. <laughs> that's me. That's matrix speak. Yeah, that's matrix. That's um. The other forms, like this is this is made in like C plus plus or Python yeah, or whatever. Uh-huh. But I can't for the I can look at it and be like, oh, that looks like Python. Don't tell me what it means though. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and then I'll just go get a smart guy to do it. Yeah. And look at it. Get, but we gotta get a smart guy. Yeah. There's very few platforms out there that that have open source algorithms that you can see, and they're like very not like I don't want to say unpopular because that that makes it seem like they're bad platforms mm-hmm. but they're just not as popular yeah like there's one called minds m-i-n-d-s it's um it's like a, a combination of twitter and instagram um but they have an open source algorithm that shows you how they um put stuff on your feed and that those are the get, things that are craziest to me the algorithms for the feeds for like instagram and all that stuff and the tweets and all that crazy yeah well it's it's crazy how they've pretty much whittled down human patterns yeah. and the human factor into a uh, math formula right and it's not supposed to like you think out like if you're thinking about it you're like no the human factor is always different it's, not, it's never black and white like that uh-huh. and they're proving like eh, it kind of is yeah <laughs> no it's insane I, I mean we were talking about this too like um, some of this stuff that you get on Instagram is because they know who you're friends with and who you interact with the most on those programs so if I look at a, a video on Instagram reel and I it, it it looks at how long I looked at it. So it must know that I liked it, and because we're friends, it's gonna say, "Well, Sarge likes it, or Sarge and, uh, and I are friends, so he must like it yeah. too." It's not just your friends; it's your friends that you are interacting with on the platform most. Right. So if it sees me liking your post, or vice versa, or yeah. sending you messages and stuff, then they'll be like, "Oh, these people are closer right. than just friends." Mm-hmm. Um, closer than friends. On the on the platform, <laughs> not in. <laughs> Not in this. <laughs> Not that there's anything wrong with Not that. Not there's anything wrong with that at all. 
But um, yeah, it's very impressive. I wish I was uh, halfway smart enough to like yeah. understand it, it all. I listened to the, you know like the Zuckerberg and all that uh, those interviews and stuff. It's Skynet's right around the corner. Yeah, it's it it's sort of nerve wracking because yeah. way back in the day, like eighties, nineties, probably even before that, mm-hmm. they always had those movies of like we did you know we did this just to see if we could, but yeah. we. We never thought of if we should. If we kind of should, thing. Yeah. same with Jurassic Park. Yeah, right. right. Jeff Goldblum. Yeah, right. It's uh, words to live by. And it always ends up like Terminator is right. that same reason. All that, and then we're we're living we're doing it now. It. They're we're like doing it. They're like, nah, that's not gonna happen. It's never to gonna us. happen. And then here we are. Yeah, it's gonna happen. It's gonna. It's a, absolutely it's gonna, gonna happen. happen. Did you see several months ago um, the guy at Google? Was it Google? I think who I think he got fired. Um, he was working in their in their AI department like part of their AI department Mm. and he said that he was um, interacting with their AI like experiment guy that they have Mm -hmm. their AI platform and um, I don't know what they call it and he 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 got fired because he like publicly put out there all the all the reasons why he thinks that this is a a sentient thing and not just yeah yeah Um, but Google and I don't know if they're telling the truth or they did like the standard government like cover up of like, mm-hmm. no, we've built it so that it's so good at picking up like your human patterns based off of the inputs and the algorithm that it responds to you like a human. That's what like that's what the AI is for us. That's what we're building. Someone to pretend like to be almost indistinguishable from human sure. interaction on on the internet. It's not a physical thing, yet. right? Uh huh. Um, kind of like that movie Her. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah, but wasn't like her could do a lot of things. Like our entire infrastructure is internet based. If yeah. saying it's only, an, I'm not necessarily worried about a robot like chasing me down with an Uzi and killing me. Although that should be on the, on my it list. On on the list yeah. But giving saying like, oh well, it's only present in the internet. Well, you can still do a lot of fucking damage. Yes. Hopefully that was five minutes. Still do We're a good. lot. Of, still do a lot of damage. Only living on the internet. Yes. Absolutely. You could, you that's could really why, screw us. That's why when they said that, I was like, so? Yeah. <laughs> like, like, Everything couple, we do is internet-based. A couple years ago, um, the Office of Personnel Management, the, the, the off, that's the department that does all like the security clearances yeah. in the U.S. for people. They got, that, they got hacked, and all the people's personal data... Yeah. Uh, like and if you ever gone through a security clearance, it's pages and pages of personal data mm-hmm. on you that they get from you. All of it was hacked and it's gone. It's now in the ether. That wasn't even AI. Yeah. That was just some like jabroni hacker in China right. who cracked it. That wasn't like a sophisticated computer network right. who could do built specifically to destroy you know, humans. Destroy, yeah, the yeah. Human race. I mean, so many like it was Digital. a year or two ago. Uh, it was, again, it was just hackers, but. They hacked into like some oil pump, or I, I don't. Know, I mean, I don't even remember the exact story, but it basically led to a fuel shortage and gasoline prices skyrocketed, and there was a mass shortage of, of gas everywhere. Yeah, and that, and that was that all was, done via the internet. That was a human doing that. Yeah. Now imagine a computer built to like resemble a human, mm-hmm. but also have the brain of a computer, mm-hmm. which is like an infinite brain. Yeah. Is she hot? <laughs> <laughs> she's whatever you want her to be yeah. whenever you want her to be yeah. if she sounded like Scarlett Johansson I, I, I might look the other way <laughs> yeah, I might open up her, her CD-ROM drive <laughs> <laughs> alright we gotta let's stay on task here we gotta talk Wait, there's no baseball. task yeah. <laughs> there is though yeah the cage fact so oh, okay. we'll, uh, we'll step into the cage Okay, let's run. All right. Today's Into the Cage segment is proudly sponsored by Serum of Ipecac. Are you feeling full from stuffing your fat, stupid pie hole with Thanksgiving dinner and leftovers for the past week, and you're looking to make some room before Christmas? Well, then get yourself a bottle of Serum of of Ipecac. Just one spoonful of Ipecac once a day after a meal is all you'll need to activate the puke juices in your system so you can evacuate that future fat with ease. 
So to clear your system, to do daily pukes, and not be a complete fat ass this holiday season, just head on over to any back alley where Tony Riggs will be there with a briefcase full of bottles for you. And if you use the passphrase, pull the trigger, you'll get 2.9% off your first bottle. Sounds like it's coming handy. I need to get a real sponsor. Yeah, also the 2.9% <laughs> is just not doing anything. When are those numbers going to get bumped up? Well, when you see the prices of some of these products, 2.9% <laughs> goes a long way. <laughs> I mean, it is a guy with a briefcase full of serum. Yeah, it's it's not terribly expensive. 2.9% is, they'll, you know, they'll put a dent in yeah, it. put a dent in it, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Plus, it's not, uh, it's probably not sanctioned serum. <laughs> so, it's not FDA approved. Yeah, who knows what's in that stuff. I mean, Tony we all Riggs know what's a, in there. Tony Riggs is a hustler. But it's a serum that makes you want to puke. I think I can kind of piece together yeah. what's in there. Personally procured by Tony yeah, himself. Yeah, it's a little salty. He's always working. <laughs> all right, the cage facts. Um, so I just read recently, when I say recently, I mean within the past day, uh, Nick Cage is, they just started filming another movie. I mean, he's so This fucking guy back. loves to work, he's man. So back. He never went anywhere. No. Went back. Um, a new movie, it's a survival action thriller. It's, it's set up in this, again, a post-apocalyptic world. Mm -hmm. AI probably destroyed everything, and, and uh, he's got to pick up the pieces. It's called Sand and Stones, and it's starring him. He's a father, and he's got a, at least two kids. One of them is Jaden Martell. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right. One of the kids from the, the movie It. Okay. Um, and then this other, this other dude, Max Jenkins... Maybe it's Maxwell Jenkins, I don't know, from uh, the Lost in Space movie from several years ago. Um, it's actually filming in Dublin, Ireland right now. So it, they're keeping it, uh, once again, hush-hush on this, like, the, the specific storyline and why it's in Dublin and like, what's going on over there. Mm -hmm. um, but that's like five films in the past year now. He loves the work. Massive talent. Mm -hmm. Renfield is the Dracula one. The Western one we discussed last week. Mm -hmm. Four films. This one. And this one. Is there another one? I think there... Oh, there was another one. An even more hush-hush one that they caught, They saw him filming in uh, Toronto where he's the balding guy. Oh, right, right, right. The older right, yeah. guy. Uh -huh. So that's five films. Jeez. All set to release within the next two years. What I find fascinating, too, is he's obviously like a method actor. Yeah. You know, he has his own style of how he gets into character. How does he get into character like so like back and forth flip-flopping. You don't just, question greatness. I, 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 I'm not I questioning like his effectiveness, but how does he do it? I don't it? know how. I don't know. I wish I can... I wish I was just his assistant Yeah. for like one year. So what's what that? Five, six films? Yeah. <laughs> just to see how he does it all. I mean, he went from filming Face Off, uh -huh. excuse me, Con Air, one or the other, right to Face Off. Like, right. He just, in this, the next day, he filmed one, he woke up the next day, and he was filming another. And he, and he was the next guy. I don't, how yeah. does he do it? I mean, the, many faces. I, he is. He really is. The face-off king. Yeah. Um, so I'm excited for that. I was watching, actually, I was watching Massive Talent on my flight. I am waiting for that to come on a streaming service of, like, because I, I don't like paying for movies. I will if I have to. still pay for it? Is it on Amazon? I think you can rent it, which yeah. I wouldn't want to rent it. I want, I want it. Yeah, I, I want it for good. But I don't know. I mean, there's, I don't know. I just, I'm waiting for that to come out either on who I, I have six yeah, different I, streaming I services. I think it's, it's on, on I think you can buy it or rent it on Amazon Prime, mm -hmm. but. I want it. Um, it's like, you know, 16 bucks. Yeah, it's not happening. No. I'm waiting for it to be free on the streaming services that somebody else I know pays for and that I just use. Right. Because I'm not paying for anything. Yeah. <laughs> But it is a phenomenal movie. Yeah, but in that movie, um, there was uh, the one scene he's talking about his nouveau shamanic acting ability or whatever, mm -hmm. and part of it was he was talking about how, like, he was bringing up the fact that people are always giving him shit for work, for always take, saying yes to movies mm -hmm. and making jokes, and I think this is where real Nick Cage came out in that movie. Because he's, he said this in interviews, this is actually a previous Cage fact from probably like a year or two ago, mm -hmm. um, where he says, like, this is my work. Yeah. Like, this, this is, it's not where people are like, oh, film, you know, films are my life. Like, mm -hmm. I, you know, he's, 
this is my job. Right. So I have to, like I want to show up every day for my job. Mm -hmm. So if it means saying yes to six movies in a year where I'm working every day, that's my job. So and that's he's what I'm going to punch in. It. And he's when yeah. you're that talented, why not? Right. Um, and, and and he does happen to enjoy it. Again, it's not his life. Mm -hmm. I think his life really more consists of doing drunk karaoke in Vegas. <laughs> I went out with this girl a couple weeks ago. And we were talking about, uh, I forget how the conversation came up, but we were talking about New Orleans because it's only like four or five hours from here. Yeah, not even, I don't think. Yeah, uh, and I was telling her like how we did our road trip through there and we were like, sorry, there's some outside noise it distracted me. Uh, some Nick Cage like Easter eggs throughout New Orleans. Oh yeah. And she's like, I haven't really seen any Nick Cage movies. And like a 90s sitcom, I'm just like, check please. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Goodbye. Yeah, get out. I never saw her again either. Is it one of those where she, she didn't doesn't have an realize that she didn't see some of his movies? Like some of them, like are almost unavoidable. Yeah, no, I, I, I just don't think she. It wasn't like a, a Nick Cage sucks kind of thing. She's like, I, I haven't, I can't, even, I can't even tell you what a movie Nick Cage was in, yeah, and that was enough for me. That's a real problem. Yeah. Why didn't you tell me this earlier? Because I knew you'd respond this way. <laughs> I figured yeah. might as well do it here on the LPDS. Yeah, where I can't take action <laughs> yeah. because we're being recorded. <laughs> Smart move, man. Yeah. Smart move. All right, well, that's the cage fact. We'll uh, move it on over to the junction, spin the logo up here. Um, we're talking Hall of Fame baseball. So I, I wanted to discuss this for a couple of reasons. One, because you're way more intelligent on baseball than I am. And, well, I don't know about that. Yes, I know. I know that. All right. Um, and and two, uh, the Hall of Fame. What is it called? The ballot. Ballot. Yeah. Just came out for mm -hmm. this upcoming vote. Mm -hmm. When do they vote? Uh, see, this is what you get for telling me how much smarter I'm at baseball. I have no idea. It's. I forgot how long they had to vote yeah. when, once the ballot comes out. But I'm sure there'll be some reporter who makes some dramatic montage of the gravity of voting and then yeah. you see their votes and it's all a bunch of boobs yeah. and no real talent well that's all and that's always been my problem we can get into that in a second but like the, my problem with the sports writers being the ones voting they almost vote for their storyline because yes. so, you know this is the off season now and sometimes there's not a lot of trades there's not a lot of deals you know, not a lot of deals <laughs> not a lot of free agent signings it could be a slow month yeah Especially around the holidays when you know, got, you know, there aren't a lot of wheeling and dealing. So now they're going to start to come up with stuff. So let's let's write an article for why you know, you know, Roger Clemens should be in the Hall of Fame. You know, whether you're for it or against it, they're going to vote this way so they can write an article about it. So they're almost just like creating their own stories, and that's why they shouldn't be responsible for voting in the first place. I I, I don't understand, and I found out way too late in my life that reporters. Are the ones mm -hmm. that vote? Yep. That, like I think it's only reporters. Yeah, it's the uh, it's the sports writers. Yeah, right. Who do it? And I never like, I will never understand why it's just them voting. I, I don't understand why it would be even them at all. Right. Let alone the only people voting. Mm -hmm. um, I I'll go out to say like ninety five plus percent of the sports writers that vote probably never played baseball past oh, like I'm little sure league not. or middle school yeah what are we doing yeah i mean these are the people that are in charge of of voting who's among the best in the history of major league baseball right like and there's I, always I, never some had a, I always had a problem with that yeah and there's always some sort of like tactic behind it some of them actually have more like um i don't know like legitimacy behind them so like for example uh, you can only bid, bid. You can only uh, vote for ten uh, people on a ballot, mm -hmm. and for like the last five or six years, ten seemingly was not nearly enough. Like it was starting to get like, like some crazy good players on the ballot, and ten just wasn't enough. So like Ken Griffey Jr. when he got elected in the Hall of Fame, at that time he was actually the highest vote getter ever. Mm -hmm. It was like ninety-seven point something percent. That's the highest. Right. And the only question you have to ask yourself is. How did two point something percent of people think Ken Griffey Jr. is not a Hall of Famer? That's ridiculous. Well, some of those people would say, like, look, I only have 10 people I can vote for. 
Ken Griffey Jr. is obviously going to get in. He doesn't need my vote in order to do it. Right. So rather than vote for him, I'm going to vote for somebody who's on the cusp, on the bubble, because I'd rather see them get in than see Ken Griffey Jr. get 100, which right. it makes sense. But it's still like, just vote for a guy if he's a Hall of Famer, like cut out all the other crap. But this is where you kind of get into, and that's just one example of, you know, people have like a code of conduct that they go by or they have some other... You know, well, Derek Jeter was overrated, yeah. which, okay, maybe there's some truth to that. Maybe Derek Jeter is, was never the best shortstop ever. Right. But there is zero argument for that guy being a Hall of Famer. That's a, That should be 100%. Right. There's zero argument you can come up with, and that's not just because, I mean, that's just a statement of fact, the guy's a Hall of Famer. Right. So there's always something behind their way of coming up with these votes, and usually it's a lot of crap. Yeah, and there's also, like, self-imposed rules right. of the Hall of Fame that right. create, I think, more problems than anything else. The big one being, if you're on the ballot, what, for 10 times in a row and you don't get voted in or for whatever it is, then you're off the ballot. You have to go to the special committee. Yeah, so there's a couple layers to that. One is you have to get a certain percentage, which I think is 5%. 5%, Yeah, yes. because there's some players that have no business being on the ballot, but everybody's eligible. Right. So if you don't get at least 5%, then you're off for good. And then... And then you're right after a certain amount of times, which I don't know off the top of my head. Oh, yeah. And then then you're then you're taken off the ballot as well. Right. And my issue with that is, why? Yeah. Like, what is the reason why? I don't because know. if they're getting 50, 60 percent, pretty, you know, for for several years in a row, mm-hmm. like there's a very good chance that they're Hall of Fame caliber and they're on a list of other Hall of Fame like that are just guys that are just better than them. Right. Also, their performance is done. Right. Like leaving them on the ballot isn't going to change anything. Right. Yeah. Giving them a deadline like you have until the tenth year, right. it's not going to Or matter. you're not. It's like, well, in the eleventh year, my stats are still the same. Right. It's not changing anything. Mm-hmm. So I don't understand that. Maybe it's because they know every year that goes by, there's more people retiring that are eligible. Right. I don't. I don't understand that. Yeah, but it still stands the reason. Still... If you're not a Hall of Famer, who cares if your name's on the ballot? It doesn't really matter. It doesn't right. really change anything. The only thing that could change, and this happens a lot too, is you know, especially with like the implementation of Saber metrics, you get a different look at somebody's career where somebody might be underappreciated. And then as you start to delve into the numbers, you can start to say like, well, holy crap, this guy actually had a pretty phenomenal career. And if you go by traditional stats, it's kind of meh or yeah, he was good, but not Hall of Fame worthy. But now you have this new way of looking at value. Then you can start to say like, no, this guy actually was a Hall of Famer and that yeah. could help you. But you know, we're kind of there already. You know, right. I, I, I mean, I guess there's always new information coming out, but I, I think the numbers that we use now are, are going to be around for a while, so I don't see that changing at all. Right. I think the only thing that is going to cha- change really back is not so much like a, a analytics thing, but more of like um, the, the rules of baseball. Right. For instance, the shift is going to be taken away next year. Right. And... The shift probably prevented a lot of hitters, a lot of bat, you know, players from being considered for the Hall of Fame, like sure. you know, vote worthy, if you mm-hmm. will, yep. because people started putting the shift on them, and they went from batting 320 to batting 260 or whatever. Yeah, uh, stuff like that. Well, there's just there's certain numbers that make you a Hall of Famer, like 3,000 hits. Yep. you're getting in. I mean, maybe it, it's just one of those things, like. I never. I mean, I always thought Craig Biggio was a really good player, but I mean, it doesn't matter. He got three thousand hits. He's in. So, it, it, you know, you, you get to you know where you're shifting on guys, and that costs you ten hits a season, which doesn't sound like a lot, but over the course of you know fifteen years, that's a lot of freaking hits. That adds up. So right. yeah, I mean, you could, could be, be right, and changer. it could be a guy where you're like, man, that guy's not really a Hall of Famer. But when you get those three thousand hits or whatever it may be, like you're going. Yeah. There's a couple. There are those thresholds. that's like it's undeniable. Yeah, you're, go, you're yeah. going in. Now I will say, Biggio, even if he didn't get three thousand hits, he was like an all star in like five yeah. different positions. Sure. So he had a couple of uh, intangibles, if you will, yeah. that really helped him. Definitely out. had some intangibles. Plus, he got three thousand hits. Yeah. Now, I probably, if he wasn't getting three thousand hits, he probably wouldn't be an all star in those positions. Yeah. But well, um, I mean, like, I mean, obviously, that's an incredible amount of. I'm, I'm, like I said, it's just if you, if you get to those certain marks, like you're getting in. Right. So. And it used to be, 
I don't know what if it still is, but like if you if you have a career batting average three hundred or better, yeah, that's yeah, you're going pretty guaranteed. Yeah, um, five hundred home 500 runs home used runs. to be. I don't think it is so much anymore. Um, but maybe that that could be steroid related because I know there's a couple guys out there. Gary Sheffield's one. Um, so five hundred home runs used to be one. Um, and that's the funny thing too is we're getting into this era of baseball where we don't look at counting statistics anymore. Like RBIs don't really matter anymore, at least if you buy into the analytics. Because right. RBIs are more of a matter of circumstance than they are your ability. Like, yes, you got a base hit, but you had nothing to do with the guy standing out in second or third. Right. So, you know, you could have a guy who's batting 340, but he only has 40 RBIs because there's nobody on base in front of him. Therefore, you shouldn't be complimented for the fact that you have 150 RBIs because you have nothing to do with that either way. Right. So when you're looking at individual performance, and, and that's what Sabermetrics is all about, is trying to individualize your value, you get away from those statistical, like count, just Specific. pure counting stats. But when it comes to Hall of Fame, you still kind of look at those markers. And like I said, maybe over the next couple of years we'll get away from some of that stuff, but right. I don't but know. But I think you just kind of hit the nail on the head, and we discussed this previously. It's the conglomeration of all those individual data points. Right that should go into the Hall of Fame discussion. Yeah. Obviously, w with you know those undeniables, like 3,000 hits, whatever, many home runs or whatever, but mm -hmm. then the rest of it should be all together. Like, yeah, maybe I batted 280, but I had 3,500 hits mm -hmm. and however many thousand RBIs right. and this and that. Mm -hmm. Like, that's pretty close. You sure. Know. And there's like... You know, I've I've kind of got in. I wouldn't say I got into sabermetrics. I've kind of learned a lot about it because mm -hmm. it's part of the game now. Right. And you can either get with it or find something else to or watch. Get lost. Yeah. Yeah. So I've gotten into it a little bit. And one thing I can certainly appreciate is the defensive side of things, which you know, obviously, when it comes to Hall of Fame, it well, seems like it seems most like of nobody the, cares. Nobody gives a crap. Everybody's focused on the offensive stats, but like. One of the biggest, I think, rips of, of, of somebody not making the Hall of Fame is Andrew Jones because he is, and this is hard to say about any position. Like You argue about who's the best pitcher of all time. You can come up with a couple different answers. You can kind of come up with a good like argument for why this person is versus your person, right. yada, yada, yada. Andrew Jones is unequivocally the best defensive center fielder ever. He is as good at center field as Ozzie Smith was at shortstop. Shortstop, yeah. And Andrew Jones was a better hitter than Ozzie Smith, so I don't understand. When you can say this guy was the best position player for that position, he should be undeniably a, you know, a Hall of Famer, but right. he's not getting the love that he deserves. No, he's not. And I don't know if he's one of those that who's no longer eligible for the regular vote. Or yeah, I he think he might still be counsel, on the ballot, but, but I'm not sure. The secret Council, yeah. yeah. Um, I think he might still be on it, but I don't, I don't know for sure. But he's, I mean, he should be in. There should be no question that he should be in. Right. Um, speaking of questions, well, we'll get to the main question I asked in a sec, but uh, I think Todd Helton's on the ballot this year. Yeah. And I already read immediately, like, some some voter, mm -hmm. sports writer, was like, well, you know, don't get me started on the on any Colorado Rockies yeah. player mm -hmm. that's on the team. You know, and he was saying how, like, oh, you know, this guy gets a bit of a, a mulligan or whatever, benefit of the doubt, because he played for a couple different teams. But Todd Helton was a Rocky his yeah. entire career. Mm -hmm. And it's like, he played away games. Right. And he still has a, what's his career batting average? 340? I, he was an incredible. I, I think I, I, we were talking about this one time. It was like in 2004, I think it was. The guy hit like 370 with like 45 bombs. Yeah. And he finished like seventh in the AL. He was like seventh or fifth or something. It was, it was insane. wild. The guy yeah. put up some serious freaking numbers. Right. And it's like, don't blame Colorado yeah. for that. Like, don't make that seem like he's not a good player because, again, they didn't play every single. His his entire career was not just a Colorado uh, course field or whatever. Yeah, I mean, you can make an argument uh, uh, like for throughout anybody. the history of the game. Like, you get you play where you play. I mean, right. that's all there is to yeah, it. Yeah. What about like the Fenway Park, right. the Green Monster? That's a short porch. That's a short I porch. Fly ball will do it for you. Right. Yankee Stadium's got a short right field porch. Yeah. It's just a, a you know they always say like if Willie Mays and Hank Aaron flipped uh, as far as where they played it would be Willie Mays that had the seven hundred something home runs right because well didn't Willie Mays play at the Polo yeah and which was like you know a, a graveyard center I think so you know you play where you play and that's just that's just how it goes yeah they always they they had that discussion about um, 
DiMaggio and Ted Williams mm-hmm. too about that that trade that was that almost happened. Yeah. About getting uh, Ted Williams over to the short Yankee Stadium porch and oh, yeah. giving Joey D over to the to the Green Monster. Oh jeez. Um, I'm glad they didn't do that. Yeah. I mean, Ted I mean, Williams, Ted Williams would have been a hell of a player. Yeah. <laughs> yeah it nice to have the pinch stripes, but, but that's Joey fine. Joey D, you can't give up him. No, you no can't way. give up uh, the Yankee Clipper. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> so um, the main discussion point I want to get your take on uh-huh. um, is the Pete Rose discussion. Mm-hmm. It literally comes up every year. In fact, it comes up more than that to me because I think about it on a regular basis. Mm-hmm. Why, like, what's the deal with this guy being in the Hall of Fame or not? Um, I, we put it to the we put it to the vans to vote. We'll discuss that in a little bit as well. What mm-hmm. their what their thoughts are, but I wanted to get your take first on that um, before I either agree with you or fly off the handle. <laughs> <laughs> well, gee, no pressure. Yeah. <laughs> now it's it's obviously a resounding yes. I mean, the guy's got to be in. Um, I know we all know why he's not in. It has nothing to do with some of the factors that we were talking about, whether it's statistical or what have you it's all about the off the field well actually yeah, in his so case on the, the field for stuff. the people not following he and correct me if i'm wrong here he um while he was a manager yeah, was he was done manager. playing mm-hmm. he was a manager of the reds mm-hmm. right was he a manager uh, of the reds? yeah mm, he was a manager so. yeah he was a manager and he was uh betting on games gambling on games right that he's he has um Stated that were not games that he was managing. They were just other games in baseball, mm-hmm. um, and he got caught for it. He got busted, and they ban him for life. Yeah, for that. And now here we are. Now, <laughs> now, here here we are. now we're on LPDS talking about it. Right. Years later. Yeah. Well, you know, it's funny because this whether it's Pete Rose and there's a lot of other players that this affects. Every time this comes up, the voting, that is, it comes up this sort of code of conduct that you have to abide by. Now, obviously, in Pete Rose's case, he he was banned by the commissioner, so that's his decision. Right. But with players who actually are eligible for the Hall of Fame, because they haven't been banned from baseball, they're still not allowed in because they are pieces of shit, at least as viewed by these sports writers. Mm-hmm. Kurt Schilling is the perfect example of that. Now, I'm not shedding a tear for Kurt Schilling because I despise the man. But that's besides the point. The guy has had a Hall of Fame career. If you go by his baseball card, he deserves to be in the Hall of Fame. But he's got a lot of shit attached to him off the field. He's, yeah. I mean, he got fired from ESPN for some comments. He, God, I think he, he said something about some sports writers. I don't even get bears repeating. It's not even worth talking about. But <laughs> he's, he said some things directed at sports writers. Needless to say, he's he's a hated individual. By the people who vote for him, and therefore he's not getting in. It's right, just, and he that's, hasn't helped his case again. If you go by his career, he's a Hall of Fame pitcher. That's right. it's not even that much. Like Mike Mussin is a Hall of Famer, and Kurt Schilling probably had a better career than he did. So, like, it 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 would seem like if you took the like if you were to do like a blind taste test and you just said vote on this guy's numbers. Yes, this guy's definitely a Hall of Famer. And you flip the card over, it's Kurt Schilling. He would get in. But because of all this other code of conduct shit, he's not getting in for that reason. In Pete Rose's case, obviously, that's again, that's different because he was banned by the commissioner of baseball. He wasn't banned by Rob Manfred, obviously. It's, it was years ago. But Rob Manfred has the power to uplift it. He's not going to. Yeah. Has he stated that? Like I mean, I don't think he said it definitively, but I mean, it's at this point like, what would he, what would he be waiting on? Yeah, it's it would have been done already, um, especially because, and I actually meant to do some research on this too. Again, I think Pete Rose has had other stuff attached to him besides the gambling stuff. I don't want to be slanderous here. I don't yeah, know I don't if know. Pete Rose or Kurt Schilling watches LPDS, but I don't want to For throw sure. out. Yeah. accusations out there of what they may or may not have done but I I have read articles that stated they did certain things on and off the field which again even if P Rose's case was uh his ban was uh, uplifted I don't know that he get in for some of these other reasons yeah um the only reason I can think of Rob Manfred specifically changing his mind is if um like the entire baseball community, players, fans, 
etc., mm-hmm. were about to, you know, picket and riot towards his house. Yeah. And he needed to save face somehow. He'd just be like, hey, I decided to. Yeah, I don't even know if he did. I mean, look, look what happened when, and, and uh, you know, obviously I'm a Yankee fan, but I, and I don't like talking about this, but look at what happened with the 2017 Astros. People were going freaking crazy over that. Yeah. And what did he do? He did nothing. Did nothing. So, no, he's very, he's weak. Yeah. Yeah, so I don't see him doing that, but. Um, that's an interesting uh, take you mentioned before. Like, if you just give the sports writers, like, the ball, here's the ballot this year. The ballot consists of 25 packets, mm-hmm. and each packet has all the information you'll need on this player, mm-hmm. minus their name and their team and the years they played. Like, vote on these stats. Yeah. And if you have questions, like, if you're, if you're saying, like, oh, I, uh, can you tell me how many times he was picked off or whatever. Like, if you need a stat that's mm-hmm. not in this packet, we can we can try to provide it for you. And then you vote uh, A, B, C, D, or whatever whatever we label them as, mm-hmm. and then we'll let you know who they are afterwards. Yeah. And so I'm, I'm just, I would be interested to see how that plays Oh, I'm sure it would be a lot different, but a lot of these sports writers don't want to do that. They, no, this they is not just a themselves. product of the system. Like, they want it to be this character clause. They want it to be a part of that. They think the Hall of Fame is some sort of, like, monk establishment where you have to be, like, the perfect human being in order to get in. Yeah. It's not the freaking Hall of Fame. I mean, just, look, Barry Bonds is the best hitter I've ever seen. He's the best hitter anybody's ever seen. Like, yeah. He's a, he's a Hall of Famer. I don't care what he did. He's a Hall of Famer. And Pete Rose is the all-time hit leader. He's a Hall of Famer. It's that simple. Right. He's the hit king. Yeah. And he'll tell you. <laughs> he'll tell he, you. When he autographs his pictures, he writes his hit total on there. Yeah. That was really funny that we saw that. Yeah. We went out to dinner to this joint, and I, apparently Pete Rose, I don't know if he still lives here, but he used to live around these parts mm-hmm. in, in the Houston area, and... Um, some this restaurant had a picture of him with the two owners, and he signed it like "Thanks for the fajitas or whatever." <laughs> uh, Pete Rose, and then he wrote um, in quotes the Hit King mm-hmm. number sign forty five hundred and fifty two or whatever. <laughs> yeah. many home runs. Baller move. Yeah, that's, that's <laughs> like, pretty, just uh, in case you didn't remember, yeah. I have forty five hundred career yeah, hits, which wild. is an absurd number. I. I should look it up. I'll get to look it up while we're yapping right now. Forty-one something. Either way, it's certainly over four thousand. Yeah, it's uh, yeah, it's pretty incredible. I'm trying to look it up to see um who the second place like. Oh yeah, the the gap between what the the gap is. Yeah, yeah. Let's see if they have it in. uh, It would definitely be. uh, I'll plug them. Fangraphs is a website that I use a lot. You can look at their career numbers and. And stuff like that. Looks like so Pete Rose, 4,256. Mm-hmm. Ty Cobb has a second most with 4,000. Yeah, he played slow pitch softball. Yeah, he didn't. He got 4,100. Yeah. Hank Aaron is next with 3,700. Wow, I didn't that's realize incredible. he had that I much. didn't realize that either. That's insane. Yeah, Hank Aaron was that's pretty top wild. tier. Stan Musial had 3,600. Uh-huh. Tris Speaker yeah. had 3,500. Derek Jeter had 3,400. Yeah, and see people... Six, and that was it. Honus yeah, Wagner, 34. Yastrzemski, 3,400. Uh-huh. Pujols, he's an asterisk in yeah. my opinion. He's <laughs> hey, number yeah, nine yeah. at 3,300. And Paul Molitor is number 10 at 3,300. Yeah. So the gap gets big quick. Yeah. Um, I mean, between Hank Aaron, number three, and Pete Rose, that's... 500 hits. Yeah. That's two years. Yeah. At least. Two years of... Re- no, oh, that's like four years. That's three years. to four years, yeah. realistically. That's two Ichiro years yeah. of like record-breaking right, hits per yeah. season. Right. The, the, hit rec- the hit record is 262. Yeah. So you said there was a 500 gap? About, yeah, 500 um, hit gap between. Yeah. So that's two record-breaking years. Yeah. That'll do it. Right. Um, so in, in my opinion... And I wish I actually saw him play more than just the highlights. Mm-hmm. In my opinion, he should be a no doubter. Well, and that's the other thing too. So if you take all the other stuff away, like the like the character clause again, if we're, we're just strictly talking as a baseball player here, this guy's the blue collar Charlie Hustle, yeah. you know, running through a brick wall in order to get the extra base sort of thing. Yeah, it's like the guy you would want on your team. Di- like when when people say like diving head first into a base, 
it's not like they do now with the puss pads on their hand, their yeah. little mittens, like the oven gloves, and they slow down so they can kind of like slip and slide nicely yeah. into the bag. Right. He was legit diving in the air. Like he had yeah. air between him and the ground, diving like Superman to get to the bag. Yeah. Like an animal. Right. And that was like the safest method that he that he would get into a bag. Uh -huh. Most of the other time, he would try to kill you right. with his spikes yeah. like to get, you, or to get just, safe. Yeah. yeah, if you were a catcher and you were blocking home plate, good luck to you. You were dead. Yeah, you were dead, dead. meat. I, I'm pretty sure <laughs> he I, killed I wish, that guy. <laughs> I, I I I wanted to look it up, but I think he ended somebody's career in an, in an all star exhibition game. It didn't even count. And he and he it, ran they all count. And he ran through the catcher who was blocking home plate. They all I think count. he broke his collarbone or something like that. Shh. And it was an exhibition. I mean, he just does. I mean, that's just how he plays. He's, just, he's like some people just have the switch. Yeah, well, yeah, he doesn't have a switch. And it's no, just on all the his time. His switch was just melted on, yeah. like duct taped up. Right. Uh, and for better or worse, mostly better for him and worse for the, the opposing guys. players. Yeah, opposing players. But <laughs> anybody who wanted to play tomorrow. Right. Uh, but yeah, that's undoubted. My my whole issue with it, besides the whole like commissioner ruling mm -hmm. is the sports writers talk about it constantly and they bring that code of conduct stuff in and what drives me nuts is that it's so hypocritical that they do stuff like that mm -hmm. especially with a guy and again it's this is outside the control because it's a commissioner decision mm -hmm. but even if he was on the ballot like we're talking about stuff that he did that like gambling on the sports is not illegal. Mm -hmm. It was just against the baseball rules, right. um, and he did it as a manager. So it's it's wrong. He should have been fined and punished. Mm -hmm. But like, how many guys? I mean, look at Ty Cobb. I'm sure that yeah, guy's guy murdered somebody. Yeah, that guy's I'm a real sure piece of has. shit. Yeah, you don't he's about he was a well known piece of shit while he was playing. Right. Like, every story you look up on him or every movie depiction of him, mm -hmm. he was a piece of human garbage. Right. No doubter. Sure. It, it's just, I don't know, this whole character clause thing, like... Yeah. Poppy. Yeah. Another one. Yeah, right. And that's the other thing, too, okay? That. So you're, you're trying to protect the integrity of the game. That's why... Forget about the gambling, like, the reason itself for why he was banned. The overall umbrella that it falls under is you're trying to protect the integrity of the game. Sure. If he was gambling, theoretically, and I, th I think they've gotten a, their hands on a couple of his ledgers as far as like what he did in fact gamble on. So there is some argument as to what he was actually betting on. Sure. But the overall idea is if he was a manager and he was betting for his own team to lose, he could make decisions that would cost them cost the game. Cost them a losing. So yeah. it is all about protecting the integrity of the game. But there have been numerous examples of guys who are cheating, therefore, you know, sacrificing the integrity of the game. And some of these guys are in the Hall of Fame right now. We are fairly confident, not that anybody has failed a test, but pretty darn confident that there are people in the Hall of Fame right now who took steroids. Yes. Almost a certainty that they did. Yeah. So, like... Where where does I just don't understand where where it you know it's it's a finicky thing because where do you draw the line? Right, and I understand the whole idea of like it's not just one guy ruling on who's in and who's out. Mm -hmm. They have a team of sports writers, but no offense to some of them, I'm sure they're all nice people. But we're talking about a con like a group of individuals, and if if we're if we're thinking about like historical stereotypes. These guys were probably like big fans of sports, mm -hmm. absolute garbage at playing sports. Yeah, probably got bullied by these athletes back in the day, mm -hmm. and now they're in their high horse with all this power. Yeah, I could see that being. I don't think that's realistically what's going on for like the for the majority of people, mm -hmm. but I'm sure there's enough of them that are like. I'll well, that's the you. problem too. Is like uh, you know, even going off of that historical stereotype, I have no problem. Again, going, tying it back into like sabermetrics and stuff, I've never had a problem with like, you know, get off my lawn, nerd. Like, you don't know what you're yeah. talking about. You know, stick to your math. You don't know baseball. One of the things I love about baseball is it's open for everybody. I don't care what your background is. I don't care if you just started watching yesterday. Enjoy. Like, it's a great game. I love it. Some people don't. I do. And I think everybody should partake in it. So even, right. even if you didn't play sports growing up, even if you never made your JV high school baseball team, 
go ahead and like enjoy baseball, but don't like you said have the vendetta or you'll know, be on your high horse and start taking it out, you know, right. on 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 people's career. Like come yeah, on. I think there should be some sort of like um, a additional group of voting going on. Like you have the sports writers, and you can you can allot like a percentage of of um, influence that those votes have, mm-hmm. and then you have like a peer review or a peer vote, mm-hmm. like players you know either alumni players have that a group and then like current players or whatever Mm -hmm. whatever it may be like break it up into groups spread out the percentages of what weighs what Mm -hmm. so that way it's like just the idea of an entire group of people who never actually played in the league before to don't know you know and there's no accountability with it either it's all anonymous a lot of sports writers nowadays will post their ballot on social yeah, media, it makes up the story, like right? You said. But there's still like the guy who didn't. There's only one guy who didn't vote for Derek Jeter. He he missed un, unanimous vote by one vote. That guy never came. Guy or girl never came out and said, you know, I was the one who didn't vote for him. There's no accountability, right? But I think I think for that particular one, didn't they say something about what you were talking about earlier? No, that wasn't one of those the- cases. I mean, that wasn't a, a, a log jam of players. That was. That was that happened with with Ken Griffey Jr. I read a couple of reports for that uh, one. I thought it was similar where they were like, like that yeah. person was was mind, their thinking was he's gonna get voted in. No, no that person never came out, vote. so we we, we'll we never, never had a reason for it. The person never came out, and, and said, it's oh, anonymous to the sports writers too. So it's not like Tom Verducci knows if it was Ken Rosenthal who yeah, did. Yeah, not that like I know. That. I mean, I, yeah. I I couldn't tell you that aspect of it, but I mean, I'm, I'm that checks if it's anonymous to us. I would assume it's anonymous amongst them, but. Yeah, that person never came. There's just like I said, if you want to have a vote, then you gotta you gotta publish your ballot and show everybody who you voted. Yeah, for. that's a good idea too, because then, again, and I'm not condoning like cyberbullying by any means, but you'll get this is accountability. Again, you'll get you'll get some sort of accountability. Yeah. You'll get a lot of hate, no matter what, no matter yeah, who you I mean, vote you could for. Have you're have the perfect ballot. You're always going to get right. Hate. You're always going to get always. hate for something. Like, yeah. why did you vote for this guy? It's like I had ten votes, and you're going to give me crap for just one of my vote. Right. Got it. Mm-hmm. Um, and I don't, you know, obviously you don't like that because you don't want you don't want to make someone suicide themselves over. Yeah, well, I mean, bullying. even just but, a couple scales down, you just don't want bullying right. going on at all. But that but when is you're, part of the job. When you're living in this, not getting cyberbullied is not part of the job. I know the accountability. You're the I want to make sure everybody else knows. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm not pro cyberbullying. No, the accountability LPS is very anti yeah, 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 don't be a piece of shit. Yeah. This rule number two. But you just, I think there should be. Like if you want if you want to have the vote, then you got to let people know who you. Uh, I guess that's kind of like, I don't know. You can kind of tie that into like political stuff, can't you? Like you real could. world. I don't want to. You uh, could. No, this is we're, this yeah. is different. This is it's fucking it's, sports, it's man. Sports. Come on, it's, it's baseball. It's better. Yeah. Yeah, but there there is something to be said about people who they're living in in this little individual echo chamber yeah. where the only feedback they're getting is. What they tell themselves in the mirror, yeah. like I, this is a good ballot I'm submitting. Mm-hmm. I voted for all the right people for all the right reasons. Sure, it's and it, and sometimes it could be ego that they're doing that. Sometimes they just could be missing some information. Yeah, and it just takes like one comment of like, hey, you know this guy did this, and there could have been like, oh crap, right. you know. Now I know for the future to to add that into the mix of things I look for mm-hmm. when I make a vote. Right. Like just that, you know, that accountability and that feedback. Again, that's one of the big reasons why I put this show out to begin with when I first started. Yeah. Was because I wanted to learn about this world mm-hmm. and I wanted to get people's feedback to let me know if I'm doing good at learning and getting right. better or if mm-hmm. I still suck at it. Right. Um, it doesn't matter what I think mm-hmm. if they're the one, like, they're the, you guys are the ones listening out there. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think that should be done for some, or in some way, shape, or form for this. I mean, I guess, yeah. do they even have put out a list of who the voters are? Oh, we well, just know the sports writers, yeah, and we know the people who publicize their own ballots. Yeah, but. it's. I think there's a, a few hundred of them. I don't. I, yeah, I, there is. Yeah, so I, I think it's part of the um, sport, the sports writers union guild. I, yeah, that's what it is. I was gonna say union, but that's not it. Probably a union. Yeah, it, it it's sounds something. Like a union. Yeah, They're corrupt. Yeah, I mean, I don't think every single person who's ever written a sports article has a vote. You got to be part of some sort of membership thing. 
Uh, so there's a few hundred of them. Yeah, but they should I mean, just put out their names and addresses. <laughs> yeah, social where they're media gonna be tomorrow. Yeah, where they where they like to eat. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I know this. The, the poll was about the Pete Rose thing, but the Derek Jeter thing really pissed me off. And again, obviously, yes, I am biased. I'm a Yankee fan, but come on, man! Like, and, and this is one of those situations where, again, you take a little bit of truth and then you turn up the volume to the point where now, like, now it's blatantly inaccurate. And that was, is Derek Jeter overrated? Right. Now, again, there's that's a being overrated is a spectrum. You can be incredibly talented. You can be a Hall of Famer and still be overrated. Both of those statements could be true. Yes. You know, was Derek Jeter ever better than Alex Rodriguez? No. Unequivocally, no. If, 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 and I hate this too. Yeah. If Nomar Garcia Parra stayed healthy, was did he have better number? I love when people say that, like it's supposed to like be some sort yeah. of like intelligent. But he didn't stay fucking right. healthy. Part of the reason why he wasn't a good player. Is he didn't is because he wasn't healthy enough to play. Right. Like, that's a factor going into your ability to be a, a Hall of Fame major leaguer. Yeah. Derek Jeter had a 20-year career. That's, yeah. That is a skill. that You, you need to stop looking at it like yeah. it's some sort of luck. Guy, uh, being if, healthy is a skill. If only I was stronger yeah, right. and hit better, right. I could have been, yeah, been a Hall of Famer too. Like, right. So it just became this thing where, oh, Derek Jeter's overrated. If he, if he played for the Yankees, if he didn't play for the Yankees, he wouldn't be shit. He was garbage. If he played for Kansas City, he wouldn't be anything. Doesn't make any and sense. And what, what did you just say? He was the top 10 in the hits of all time? Like, come on, yeah. man. Of Give me a time. break. Yeah, it doesn't, yeah. again, the Yankees weren't the one pitching to him. It's not right. like he was protected at the plate by all these other Yankee players hitting for him. Yeah. Like, don't worry, like, yeah, we'll they always say, yeah. oh, He wouldn't have won you know, all those championships if he didn't play for the Yankees. Or maybe the Yankees wouldn't win all those championships if they didn't have him. Have him, yeah. You can make both arguments. Yeah. So, um, but also I do, for that one sports writer, again, not knowing who it is, giving them the benefit of the doubt, if, if it, the vote is anonymous to the sports writers themselves, mm-hmm. he could be or she could be in their echo chamber making votes Thinking like I don't remember who who else was on the ballot that year. I don't know if it was I don't think it was one of those years where it was like holy um, crap, I I need more votes. And there yeah. have been years where like ten is not nearly enough. Right, right. I don't know if it was that. But I don't think it was that. It could have very well been this person was like, well, I'm pretty you know I'm pretty confident Jeter's going to get a bunch of votes anyway. Mm-hmm. So. I'm gonna vote for these guys or whatever. I like to think that and I it don't, was just a suck bag who just you know was a Red Sox fan or something like could that. Could have been. It could have very well I, been. I just assume that's what happened because I'm I'm pretty sure. I remember thinking like so my, again. My first thought goes to okay, it makes sense that you know this guy doesn't need my vote, so I'd rather vote for a bubble guy rather than waste my vote on him. Mm-hmm. I don't think I remember thinking that that was not the case for that year. Yeah, that's a good point, too, because also, if I remember correctly, there was talk about, is Jeter going to get the unanimous first right. ballot mm-hmm. before the ballot came out? Right. Um, and that could have been, like, once it's talked about mm-hmm. already, before you know before it all happens, it's now it's in your ear. Now yeah. it's in your head. Right. So you're already thinking about, like, oh, I'm going to screw this guy, or, like, oh, I want to help him out, you know, whatever yeah, right, it is. Right. So that could have been what it is, but... Um, I forgot the percentages of the vote on on the poll, but five people, at least five, there could have been more by the time we record this, more votes could have come out, mm-hmm. but at least five people voted no, that voted Pete Rose no. should not be. I want their names, I want their addresses, I want so where they're going to be gonna, tomorrow. I won't give you the names on, on record here. Uh-huh. I will say two of them we've played with. Really? And one of them is well known throughout the LPDS community and is a reputable human being. So I really want to get their take. I w- I'd like to get them on the show. Is he the villain of LPDS? No, no. No, no. <laughs> he, I said he's a respectable, oh, respectable. member okay. of the LPDS universe right. in the junction. Wow. Um, I won't reveal names. I want to get their, I want to get that person's input for sure because yeah. I respect their opinion. Mm-hmm. Uh, the other people, I read their names and I was like, this checks. Yeah. Like, <laughs> You're a boob. <laughs> like, not that we want to lose you as a listener. I, I, I'm pretty sure they going, don't listen. I just think uh, they saw they the click, story yeah, and okay. it was baseball related because they don't interact with any other non baseball related uh-huh. uh, like poll or question I put out there. Yeah. So, um, yeah. And I even I got mean, a uh, even even the spam accounts on Instagram, like all those porno ones that's like <laughs> watch me do my first sex and all that stuff. They all voted yes. <laughs> 
Even they know a Hall of Fame baseball player when they see him. Pete Rose should be a Hall of Famer. Want to see me do fuck? Yeah. <laughs> Want to see me do? It's usually my first fuck. And you look at their pictures like, you've done this before. <laughs> but it was a staggering numbers minus those five. Yeah, I mean, Those I five don't know. rabble I, rousers. <laughs> You know, it, it it feels like I'm sort of like uh, talking shit about something I'm so passionate about, but I just don't think the Hall of Fame should be uh, a shrinement of, you know, human beings. This is not like the Nobel Peace Prize. Right. It's, it's who is the best baseball player. Not to mention that every other Hall of Fame in anything that has a Hall of Fame does not care about right. the yeah. like your moral fortitude or yeah. the, like the NFL has like convicted murderers yeah. in the Hall of Fame. And right. they're like, he was a damn good football player. He was a damn good football player. <laughs> yeah. Now, I don't think it should go to that extent, but it, no. is, it is interesting just because we can have spinoff you know, discussions here about like how, why baseball is quote-unquote boring. Again, we're not talking about murderers here, but just to back it down a few levels, baseball seemingly, more than these other sports, have to have this code of conduct about how you're supposed to act yeah. and how you're supposed to talk to the media. I do always found it interesting that, you know, you get a, a pitcher who throws a nine inning gym, seventeen strikeouts, you know, two hits over nine innings. And it's almost like a canned exit interview. Well, well I was really feeling you know, my pitches felt good, my catcher was calling a good game, you know, everything you gotta give that you Everybody know team in the dugout, credit, you gotta yeah, give yeah. them a lot of credit. Why can't you just go out there and be like I shoved it right up their fucking asses tonight. Yeah. Why can't you do that? I dominated. I fucked them good today. Yeah. But because baseball has this code of con- conduct, and I think that lack of personality is what what makes baseball so boring. And again, right. we're not talking about like you know I, this came up because of the murder thing. You don't have to go to that. No, you don't have to go murder. But, but just having personality, and again, this character yeah, clause shakes things up in an interview, in a yeah, press yeah. conference, at least. But, but it just falls under this, you know, this tree of character clause. Everybody wants to be Derek Jeter. Everybody, you know, I, I was listening to uh, a couple other baseball players talk about it, and they say everybody grew up watching Chase Utley. You know, this guy was a blue collar MVP second baseman who didn't say two words, and, th- and you know, it's just that lack of you know, personality and sort of, I, I don't know, I just think the drama would be good for baseball. Yeah. You know. Good drama, yeah. not murder. Oh, yeah, not, not murder, but it's just like, okay, I'm going to watch baseball because I hate this fucking team. I think they're all a bunch of pieces of shit, but I'm watching because I want to see them lose. Right. And I think that sort of aspect of it could help baseball as far as the popularity goes. Yeah, I mean, even like the earlier uh, like Red Sox Yankees rivalry games yeah. where you like you watch it because at any given moment like shit can hit the fan right not just a good baseball game mm-hmm. of two good teams at the time but like these guys can fight yeah well now everybody's friends yeah. that's a, that's another problem everybody's buddies you know yeah. you always see it before the game they're hugging and dapping each other and yeah, you know, talking about all, God that's knows all what well and good but at, and then at, at at that point, at the very least, shake things up in the press conference. Yeah, I like, just have some more personality, you know. Do I, something. It, yeah. and, and it's it's always funny to me, and and I I think this is actually a, a an area where we disagree. But I like I love Bryce Harper. I think he's freaking awesome. I wish he was on the Yankees. But a lot of people put him under like the prima donna, like shitty sort of teammate kind of guy, all because what he doesn't always say and do the right thing, which. I don't even think is necessarily even the case, but you know he has like this prima donna sort of aura around him. But he's yeah. an exciting freaking guy to watch. We should have more players like that. Yeah, my my big issue with him is that like I always been a team guy. Yeah, like that camaraderie with your team sure. always got me through my my life. Yeah. All the shitty parts of my life, I can always re- rely on like having that. Mm-hmm. And when I, you see him and you see other players talking about like. Yeah, I don't want him in my dugout. Yeah. Stuff like that. Mm-hmm. I, I again, I don't, I don't know the dude. Like, I don't know exactly what's going on. Maybe those players are the problem. Are the problem? Yeah. It could be because it's not like every player in every dugout he's been in said like he's a he's a poison. Yeah, no, I don't think it's there's, the case at all. there's definitely been those players out in the league. Yeah. Um, but when you see people saying that, it makes me quit. That's the only issue I have sure. with him. He's a good player. Do I think he's like, like I mean, he's two sixty, forty home runs? 
and he's uh, like an electric personality. Like yeah. every, all eyes are always on him. Right. Even if he, you know. But that electric personality can can lead people to say like, oh, this guy's a prima donna. He's a piece of shit. It's right. Like for that sure. By itself, forget about like you know the fights. You know, like with between him and Papelbon or whatever that you know that happened over the yeah. years. People I will like take that fights. that you know that personality, that electric persona, and say, oh, he's a me guy. He's a piece of shit. And like I said, baseball is, it just seems like a bunch, you know, a few hundred players that have to toe the line at all times, and that's what makes it boring. Right. Yeah, I want to see more uh, A.J. Pruszynski type yeah. players out there that yeah. will will cut you, will hide a shiv in his shin guard yeah. to cut you while you're, you know, headed home. Yeah. Uh, just, to, just to stir the pot a little bit. Sure. That's why I like Donaldson on the Yanks, even though... I, <laughs> Even though don't, I could have batted, he, was, he, sucks. he was such a dumper. He was yeah. such a bum oh, dump this God. year. But I, I liked, even when he, like, at his worst, which happened to be the most important time of the year in the playoffs, where he just batted zero, yeah, practically. Yeah, with, like, uh, with 75% strikeout rate. I was waiting rate. for, like, every at-bat, I was waiting for, like, maybe this pitcher will throw high and in, <laughs> and he'll just cause it, and he'll just start fighting. Yeah. Like, that's because that's what I always wanted him to do, sure. just fight somebody. Yeah. Just get, get things going again. you got to have some personality in there. Yeah, so... Um, but that's in direct contrast with again this character clause oh. where you have to embody like the perfect person. It's too person. puritanical. It's yeah. it, like you're gonna get shunned, just like the Puritans did way yeah. back in the day because yeah. they didn't like to do sex and and take all you know, like show more, you know show wrist and, like <laughs> like show wrist baseball like you right. show a little show bit. a little bit yeah you know? show a little leg right so all right that's all I got today. You got anything else? I mean, I could we could talk baseball for another two hours. Yeah, we'll but. have to do um, another. We'll talk. We'll pick. We'll we'll have to like pick specific topics. Yeah. So that we're not talking over eighteen hour marathon sessions about baseball and then the good old days and yeah. this and that. So um, we'll do that the next time you're on. We can talk um, about our Thanksgiving plans. I don't have any. The end. Yeah. Real well, credits. Thanksgiving by the time this comes out, Thanksgiving will be over. Yeah. Well, actually, so, don't have any. How was your Thanksgiving? <laughs> it was uh, as expected, <laughs> as it's been for the last nine years, yeah. sitting in my apartment by myself. Hey, we had one good year. That was pretty good. <laughs> yeah. Peanut butter and jelly uh, burgers. Yeah. Go solid. back. What was that? Uh, two years ago. Go back and check that uh, episode. Yeah, that, was, that was a good one. That was yeah. a good one. So, uh, before we go, though, hit the big three real quick. For those of you uh, first to the LPDS community, the big three is the three pillars of the LPDS universe to stay in strong and being a better, happier, more positive human being and spreading that positivity and goodness and happiness throughout. So number one, exercise every day. It's one of the easiest things you can do. Just go for a walk after a meal. It's as simple as that. You'll feel better physically, mentally, and emotionally. You'll be healthier in all those three aspects. Number two is probably the hardest one. You mentioned it earlier. Don't be a shitty person. You won't get in the Hall of Fame that way. Right. The easiest thing you can do is see something you don't like and, um, and immediately react emotionally uh, against that. Um, and the only thing you're doing, the only thing you're doing is doubling the negative in that situation, in that environment there. Um, and that helps nobody. You might think, like, you might have good intentions by being an asshole to someone who you think is a bad guy and they maybe deserve it. But you're not helping the situation at all. So take that step back. Decide to be a good person. Just It's as simple as refraining from being a shitty person is all you need to do. You don't have to actively go out and buy flowers for somebody. But just in the choice, like the opportunities you have to be a shitty person, don't, don't do it. Don't take it. That's it. Number three, the most important one, especially uh, as we uh, finish off the, the Thanksgiving season, or the, the holiday, excuse me, uh, be genuinely thankful and grateful for all the good you have in your lives. Every day, all the time, even if it's just one thing a day that you think about, that you're actively thinking about getting the, the juices flowing in your brain and saying, man, this I'm, I'm lucky to have this in my life. That's all you need to do um, because it, it changes your your muscle memory and, and, the, and the way you think about things slowly but surely to the point where you're always living in that that space of gratitude and thankfulness um, and that just trickles down to everybody else so now that's all I got Ordy thank you thank you thank you I appreciate it thank you thank you guys a thousand times (laughs) thank you don't forget to like and subscribe thank you
do all the how you doings, hit the hotline 202-670-1114. I did get a couple of calls. They were not one bit related to to this um, topic. Mm -hmm. So I'll play those at a later date, probably on a solo episode, where we can talk about whatever the hotline is. Um, but I didn't want to get us off track this this go around. We were never really on track. So we're always on track. Even if even if it looks like the we're track on, just takes so yeah, a couple different it's turns. It's a rail it's a trackless rail <laughs> railroad <laughs> here at the junction. So um, thank you guys again. I love you all. Stay strong.